Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for this great opportunity. Uh, it's my really honor to be part of your uh, workshop. And so, uh, we. Uh, my name is Kanako Harada, associate professor of the University of Tokyo. Uh, I belong to the Department of Medicine, but my background is uh, mechanical engineering. So first, just let me briefly introduce uh, about our laboratory. So we have been developing robotic systems and virtual reality simulators, skill assessment methods for surgical and other medical applications. So we have been developing surgical robotic systems for pediatric surgical application, for neurosurgery, for, so, uh, for eye surgery. And this day we started to work with uh, surgeons uh, in the field of pathology. And also uh, we are doing a telelobotic, developing telelobotic system for in, in orbit rodent experiment uh, by collaborating with JAXA. Um, so again, as I said, we have been working on surgical robots for years. Uh, and these days that we found that the surgical robotic technology can be easily applied to the robots that work in an environment challenge, challenging for human. Uh, so many companies uh, who have been working on the surgical robotic technology have been applying their technology for the COVID-19 swab test. Uh, for example, this is uh, a demonstration by the Medicaloid, uh, who is developing a surgical robot in Japan. And as I said, that we have been also developing robots for pathology grossing. And, you know, the... This pathology sample is fixed using hormarine, uh, toxic for human. So this telerobotic uh, technology is uh, capable of providing a safe environment for the scientists, uh, doctors. And now uh, we have been working for scientific experiment. So that's a uh, uh, background of our research group. And uh, as the title says, uh, so sorry there. So we have been working on a uh, moon short project because uh, Japanese cabinet office recently started a program called Moonshot. Uh, it's a very huge uh, project and there they are proposing the back casting research and the development. You know, the forecasting uh, research development is to repeat improvement, uh, but in the back casting research and the development, the government first needed to uh, set their future vision uh, specifying uh, nine goals, then they specify the technical challenge uh, to be solved in the uh, current phase. So the Moonshot goals, uh, the Moonshot program has nine goals, and two goals are related to robots. And one of them is Moonshot Goal 3, uh, led by project program director, Professor Fukuda Toshio. And the Moonshot Goal 3 is about the realization of AI robots that autonomously learn, adapt to their environment, evolve in intelligence, and act uh, alongside human beings by 2050. And then uh, Professor Fukuda selected uh, program managers, four program managers uh, who started their research in 2020. And then uh, he also involved a new program project managers uh, this year as well. And this illustration shows his vision of the robot uh, co-evolving with human in 2050. And you see that this part, so his vision includes a robot uh, helping scientists to, uh, to discover uh, new scientific principles so uh, specifically, the project goal has several targets. One of them is the development of an automated AI robot system that aims to discover impactful scientific principles and solutions by thinking and acting in the field of natural science by 2050. Uh, given this uh, target, we have proposed AI robot scientists uh, that are autonomous AI robots for scientific discovery. So we are dreaming of uh, robots that can work in a biohazardous environment autonomously like this, or the robots that can do experiment handling uh, toxic materials, or the robots can do the experiment that require very high precision, accuracy, and dexterity. 
And then we are dreaming of uh, discovering, uh, exploring science together with the robots and the human uh, scientists. So uh, as I said that the, our uh, background is robotics. Uh, this project is about robots. And uh, uh, so, uh, so from robotics viewpoint, uh, what is needed by 2050? Uh, as you can see that the robots are very good at tasks that can be programmed in advance. Uh, so the robot can do a task much faster than human and much accurately uh, if the task can be programmed in advance. So, uh, but industrial robots are used for the manipulation of rigid object like this one. And the variation of the shape and the physical properties are uh, uh, intentionally controlled uh, to be sufficiently small to be handled, hand, handled by robots. So uh, I want to emphasize that the variation that the ro such these robots handles is much smaller uh, compared to the variation uh, like the biology scientists usually face. Uh, Okay, so I have, um, okay, so, and this slide show another example of the robot uh, doing the, uh, uh, handling the vegetable uh, to prepare a salad. Uh, so the robot hands are uh, uh, trying to grab uh, carrots and the lettuce uh, like this way. Uh, this is a deep learning based method of the uh, manipulating soft object. Uh, then this type of action cannot be programmed in advance. And as you can see that uh, uh, th this example is a, a holding of a towel. And these tasks are super easy for human. But as you can see that the, these are very, very difficult uh, for the current, uh, considering the current robotic technologies. Uh, so, but, you know, we cannot leave such tasks for scientists, right? So we are also, uh, we are considering to advance such robotic technology to cover all tasks required in a scientific exploration. And, so this slide uh, show the video of the vision uh, of our project. Uh, so it takes four minutes. Welcome to the year of 2050. Where robots that can learn act on their own are playing an active role in the various fields of society. Hello, here at the AI Robot Scientist Lab, AI Robot Scientist and Human Scientists are exploring science together. Welcome everyone to the AI Robot Scientist Lab. Would you like to have a quick look at our research? Yes, let's go! In this lab, AI Robot Scientists with various functions collaborate with human scientists each making use of their best attributes to advance their research together. Hey, Dr. Data, what kind of research are you working on now? I am currently conducting an experiment to validate the hypothesis I discussed with you the other day. See how this cell reacts when I inject the reagent here. So, they work like a partner in research, not just as a robot doing what we programmed them for which allow us to realize experiments that cannot be done by just humans or AI robots alone. Welcome. This is a communication hall for human scientists and AI robot scientists. In the past, many scientific research fields could not benefit from AI or robots because there was a limit to what human scientists could do alone. AI robot scientists have solved this problem. Let's visit the era when the development of the AI robot scientist lab began. 
facing various limitations, human scientists were finding it difficult to do what was required to validate their hypotheses. The intelligence of the AI robot scientist consists of various AI theories and a vast amount of data. AI robot scientists need to be able to validate their hypotheses in the real world, and for this their intelligence needs to be embodied. Applying the inspiration of human scientists and the capacity for research of AI robot scientists, we're expanding the frontiers of science. Aren't you looking forward to a future with AI robot scientists? So, uh, so thank you for watching. So this is a vision that uh, robotic researchers conceive uh, about their scientific exploration by robots. So again, that we are interested in advancing robotic technology itself. So our targets are scientific experiments that cannot be automated with uh, current robotic technology. So the, we need to handle little data sets in different modalities. And the robots need to handle soft, uh, small, and fragile samples with individual differences. Uh, for example, in this photo, the surgeon are handling the uh, oocyte uh, of a frog. And this one is a root of a plant uh, whose diameter is 100 micrometer. And they want to collect uh, each sample, uh, each cell, uh, one by one. And then uh, also surgeon want to do the a kind of surgery on mouse. And by realizing the experiment that I showed in the previous slide, uh, some scientific discovery can be feasible, uh, which include the uh, discovery of the biostimulants. Uh, it's a medicine for plants to make plants robust to environmental changes. And also we can find uh, the regen regeneration mechanism of plants uh, to address food shortages. And also we want to study the mechanism of intractable diseases for better diagnosis and treatments. So uh, what is needed for the AI robot scientists from engineering viewpoint? Uh, so we, the robotic researchers consider that the intelligence interact with the real world using the body. So in, in the brain, first we think what to do using our knowledge. Then we think how to do using our skills. Then in the real physical space, uh, we use the body to do what the brain came up with and observe the reaction to update what to do and how to do. And we also don't remember all knowledge or all skills. We just abstract knowledge and skills to structure them as an intelligence. So what to be developed in our project are the isolation. So we want to develop isolation instead of the uh, each element of the technology. So uh, again, that the same uh, illustration, but what we are developing is first is a robot body uh, that can do the action with higher accuracy, higher precision and higher dexterity and with sensors for observation with a large range and a higher resolution. Then we also are developing an AI uh, to interpret experimental data to get new knowledge and uh, constantly in the processing capability uh, to propose hypotheses. Then we are also uh, developing AI to interpret robot data to get the new skills and uh, to using the skills and uh, uh, physical capability of the robot body, uh, manipulation strategy can be proposed. And we are also uh, involving a mathematician to abstract knowledge and skills. So uh, I, I want to emphasize that the robotic researchers, most of the robotic researchers are interested in this body part, the hardware, and this skill part, the implicit knowledge. But uh, the biologists or the scientists are interested in this uh, AI for explicit knowledge. But the, to realize the AI robot scientists, the both 
AI, both intelligence will be uh, needed and integrated. So that's why the, we have involved uh, researchers in the different domains, uh, researchers who are studying the hardware and uh, robotic control and AI for experimental design and analysis. And we also involved a mathematician uh, to abstract the knowledge uh, and the skills. And we are also working with scientists uh, so that our, uh, so that the scientists can try our prototypes. Uh, so today, the Professor Takeuchi also will give a talk later. So, uh, so today I will talk about the, the robot, uh, the hardware that can do the uh, task with higher accuracy and precision and dexterity. So this is the first prototype of the AI robot platform. Uh, we just started this project two, almost two years ago. Uh, so this is a completely new robotic setup. Uh, the four robotic arms, uh, each with a different uh, experimental tools, uh, gathering uh, together uh, to work on a sample under the microscope. And uh, this robotic system was designed to demonstrate a self-organization. So this slide shows that how uh, a child gains uh, skills uh, for manipulation. And you know that uh, now, if robot cannot achieve the task, uh, the robot just say PP and stop, right? But the child won't give up. Uh, for example, he will bring a chair to extend his ca physical capability and also call his mom to do a team formation and a task assignment. So we are dreaming that uh, if the robot can have this opportunity, to do the self-reconfiguration, uh, then the, a lot of scientific tasks can be autonomously done using the robotic systems. And uh, this is a demonstration of the uh, dexterity of our robotic system. So one of the, our target uh, tasks to demonstrate our uh, the, the capability of our robotic system is the uh, implantation of that organoid. Uh, organoid is maybe you know that patient specific mini organs, and they want to implant uh, mini organs on the brain of the mouse uh, to be covered with a transparent uh, glass so that uh, the mouse blood flow can be uh, integrated with the uh, vascular flow of the mini organ. But the implantation of this is very difficult. Uh, the skills of the, the scientists affect the success ratio of such task. So we are just demonstrating that using the three uh, robotic tools uh, with uh, uh, cotton swab, drill, and the tweezers, this can be done. Uh, now, currently, the, by using a teleoperation. And we also did, did this demonstration uh, by, demonst uh, by Kyoto Tokyo Telemanipulation. Uh, we had a conference last week. So we brought this uh, user interface to Kyoto and uh, the robot stays at the University of Tokyo and we demonstrated uh, the teleoperation using the robot. So this is, a, we, we are using egg uh, to simulate the removal of the cranial bone of the mouse. And you see that uh, the, the shell uh, of the egg can be removed without uh, breaking the membrane behind. And this task is often used to simulate the removal of the cranial bone without damaging the uh, dura mater membrane beneath. So again, that the, now this is teleoperated, uh, but we are going to integrate the AI part, the autonomous control of the robot, so that the robot can handle the uh, variation of the target uh, in color or in shape or in mechanic and physical properties. Okay. And you just saw that the robot is working properly, but uh, there, there are several control algorithms that are implemented, of course. And one of them is uh, automat uh, okay, autonomous collision avoidance because the field of view is quite small. So the surgeon can see only the uh, view, uh, enlarged view, 
but the robot need to avoid the collision with each other and also the collision between the robot and the environment. So this control was originally developed for surgical robots, but now implemented to the robotic system. So uh, the, this robot can be teleoperated again uh, remotely also and also to, in the same room. And we have been also developing the uh, simulators uh, to provide uh, digital twins uh, to uh, also to develop a new algorithm. So this one is a simulator, uh, and this one demonstrates uh, the manipulation. Uh, so sorry, automation of the camera. So you see that the camera, uh, the right hand is teleoperated, and right left hand is autonomously controlled to track the tip of the drill. Drill. And we are also demonstrating the dexterity of our robotic system using that task often used for the training of the surgery. This is a, a pig called the pig transfer fire task to move that pig from one to uh, another pin. And so we are developing systems for uh, scientific experiment that what we are developing the new algorithm can be also implemented in the surgical robots uh, in the future. And we have also recently published this AI, uh, prat, uh, this GitHub site uh, to share this simulation uh, so that uh, other researchers can work on our simulator so that uh, they can also test uh, their uh, new control with our physical uh, robotic platform, and we are trying to invite researchers uh, who are not interested in hardware development, but also uh, who are interested in the development of the new uh, algorithm for automation. So uh, in summary, we think that the autonomous AI robots can make impactful contribution to science, and multidisciplinary research is the key to the future. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Any questions? Sinaga-san, do you have any questions about the animal experiments or any comments? Uh, thank you for an interesting talk. Um, I was kind of surprised that you were doing a, a remote type surgery to the mouse skull. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Maybe she's not hearing. I I'm, I'm hearing you. Okay, good. Okay. So uh, I, I was wondering how your system can uh, adapt to uh, small differences uh, with the animal. I actually do surgery by myself, and I know that each mice has a very, very uh, minor, but uh, they're different one by one. So is it possible to uh, do the same kind of surgery to those different types of skulls? Uh, thank you very much for your comment. And uh, for the telemanipulation, yes, because uh, like a Da Vinci surgical robot, uh, the surgeon's brain can be somehow integrated with the robotic control. So the surgeon can handle the variation uh, among the targets. But for the autonomous control, currently no. But uh, also, you know, we are not capable of developing the, such a high level autonomy. That's why we are involving other researchers uh, developing the uh, deep learning based uh, algorithm uh, to handle such a variation uh, among the targets. So our uh, it, it's a kind of multidisciplinary research project designed to uh, integrate high-level automation uh, using the same robotic system. So uh, again, that the, the researchers developing the AI algorithm are working on the same robotic system so that their new algorithm can be uh, integrated easily to our system to work on the real samples. Looking forward to your future Thank results. You. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you very much. 
There's also a couple of questions on chat from online participants. Uh, the first question, uh, what's the most difficult part um, for a robot scientist, robot architecture or AI algorithm mm -hmm. or anything else? Do you have any ideas on the most difficult part? Yeah, no, everything is difficult, but uh, I think that uh, the thing is we, I mean, uh, multidisciplinary research is needed. Uh, uh, we need hardware and we need uh, uh, intelligence for manipulation. We need intelligence for the hypothesis and everything need to be integrated together. So of course, each uh, each has each topic is really difficult, but uh, integration could be the most difficult. And I think that our project uh, is a good platform uh, because it's a uh, we involve researchers of the different uh, research domain. So I think that our communication uh, can find a way for the breakthrough of this challenging uh, topic. Okay, next online question. How do you plan to train the AI to learn implicit uh, knowledge? Which mm. algorithms, architectures for such a robot to learn these things? Thank, thank you very much. Uh, this, uh, you know, AI to learn implicit knowledge is actually has been uh, uh, issues for a long time in the field of factory automation, for example, because uh, the, you know, they, in the factory, there are some, skilled people doing assembly task or machining task and they want to uh, extract the skills but they all of them failed because they wanted to uh, measure the hand motion by attaching the sensor to the scientist uh, for the skilled people but it wouldn't work because the the what to be measured is the interaction between the tool and the object Right. So the using the Taylor robotic system, we can measure, we can collect the data about the interaction between the tool and the object. So the Taylor robotic system is a, uh, a kind of way to collect the data sets uh, to learn the implicit knowledge. Uh, so I think I did I answer your question. Thank you. Thank uh, you. In your experiment last week, in, I was in Kyoto. So mm -hmm. what kind of connection did you use? I suppose you need very low latency uh, network connections. It, it's it's just a, a normal connection. Oh, okay. Uh, wired oh. connection, but uh, you know, the currently the, the internet connection is really good. Mm -hmm. So we didn't need any specific uh, things. Uh, consider the delay or latency. Mm -hmm. So it, it worked for such a simple task. Yeah, that's good to know. Thank you. Any other questions? If there is not, uh, thank you very much again for Havada-san for your fantastic talk. Thank you very much.